Welcome to a new edition of Shelby TV called The Chieftain Rewind. I'm your host, Robert Gambro. This show is all about the Utica High School's varsity football team and how they're doing throughout the course of their season. Let's take a look at the very first game against Bloomfield Hills right now. The Utica Chieftains travel to Bloomfield Hills to take on the Blackhawks. Third down, Utica in a big hole. Zach Keen back to pass. Screen to Christian Gegovic. And down the sideline, finally pushed out at the 35 yard line of Bluefield Hills. Then Christian Gegovic muscling his way through Blackhawk defenders. Gegovic through the offensive line, cutting back twice into the end zone to give the Chieftains an early 7 0 lead. Some missteps for the Blackhawks early. The snap going over the head of Andrew Barish. And the Chieftains take advantage. Later on in the first, screen pass to Jacob Gasso. The nice gain here. Then slant down the middle, Andrew Barish hooking up with Darren Mack into the red zone, down to the 17 yard line of Utica. Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks, Jacob Gasso putting in work down to the one foot line. But the stout Chieftain defense won't let him in the end zone. McGuire Palicky tackles him for a loss. And the Chieftains head into the second quarter with a seven to nothing lead. But the first play of the second quarter, Justice Jones sneaks into the end zone and ties it up at seven apiece. Ensuing kickoff, Christian Gegovic has a seam, but it's a fumble. Puts it on the ground, recovered by the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks. And they make them pay Alec Ward with the end around. All the way to the 12 yard line. The Blackhawks still driving. Andrew Barish back to pass. Nailed by Tommy Perez and it's a fumble. And Ian Gradzinski takes it to the house. Six points. But no, they ruled it an incomplete pass. No touchdown. McGuire Palicky stuffing the ball carrier in the backfield. Utica driving. Zach Keen, reception by Diego Gomez. Utica back to pass. Bombs it down the field, but picked off by Darren Mack. Into the end zone for the pick six. Utica trying to get something going. Nice reception here by Kirk Kessens. But their drive would stall out. Christian Ferris leaping into there to snag this one. And Alec Ward finds the end zone again on another end around. To lengthen the Blackhawk lead. Second half, the Blackhawks take to the air. Andrew Barish, nice pitch and catch with Darren Mack, avoiding the Chieftain defender. Down the sidelines, finally pushed out of bounds. The Blackhawks, Barish back to pass, into the hands of Christian Ferris, making everyone miss. Dances into the end zone. Andrew Barish, Dropping this one just over the shoulder of Darren Mack. Yeah. Utica trying to get anything going. Tyler Vasodsky all the way down to the 50 yard line. Just a couple plays later, Christian Gegovic taking it to the house. For the Chieftain's second score on the night. Hand off to Jacob Gasso. Finally pushed out in Utica territory. Quick slant here to Alec Ward. And he splits Utica defenders. And he's gone. Another six points. And the Blackhawks would get it done on the ground as well. Jacob Gasso pulling his way through Chieftain defenders. Culminating in this. 15 yard touchdown scamper. Yeah. 
Chieftains trying to mount a comeback. Reception here by Sean Bird. But it just wasn't in the cards tonight. The Utica Chieftains fall to the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks. Final score, Bloomfield Hills 39, Utica 14. I had the pleasure to attend a Chieftain practice to talk to Coach Maruli and a player about their loss and what they've learned from their mistakes. You know, I think we had a, a few big plays that kind of turned the game around. So, um, you know, I don't want to make an excuse for one play or, or the other, but, um, you know, a fumble on a kickoff, uh, uh, interception for a touchdown, the one that was called back, you know, those are uh, big plays, big mistakes that kind of turned the game around and, and definitely weren't in our favor. So those are hard to come back from. So I think that, uh, you know, hurt us a little bit and was, was hard for our, for our guys to come back from. Coach Maruli says that even though they lost the first game of the season, it's still early. And he has faith in his quarterback, Zach Keen, that he will make adjustments against Gross Point North. I think, uh, you know, we made some mistakes offensively all around. And, uh, um, you know, like I said, turnovers are tough to come back from. So I, I think, you know, working a little bit more this week on the passing game, trying to work that in a little earlier in the game is going to help him, help him settle in a little bit, help him to get on a roll. And, uh, that's what we're going to try to do for him because we, we we trust him to do those things. He did them last year when he came up as a sophomore, so we're looking for some more growth for him this year. Running back and outside linebacker Christian Gegovic had an amazing game. Two touchdowns, but he said that still wasn't enough because they still lost the game. And he also is well aware on what they need to work on this week. We need our whole team to be there with us and, you know, all go through it together. And I feel like we just kind of stopped, you know, after – you know, maybe a couple calls, you know, weren't supposed to be called, but, you know, they kind of brought us down as a team, and, you know, we can't let that happen this week, you know, because we're going out and playing uh, GPN, which uh, looks a little bit better than Bloomfield Hills, but we're not scared. You know, we're ready. We're prepared this week. You know, we're excited to go out there and see what we got, you know. Utica's all-time record against Gross Point North is six wins and eight losses, and they haven't played Gross Point North since 2011, which they lost 14-12. to However, Maruli says... Let's forget about the numbers. Let's talk about here and now and how they are preparing to play against Gross Point North for the very first home game. Yeah, I think, you know, you, you said it. They, they're big up front. They like to run the ball. They like to pound the ISO. And, uh, you know, that's something that I think we're definitely going to need to improve on from last week. Um, you know, we struggled a little bit when they, when they opened up their run. And uh, I think that, that helped because they had a good passing game. But that's, that's something we've been focusing on all week is uh, recognizing their formations, uh, our linebackers coming downhill on the run game, and I, I think we just got to have to be more physical up front. We got to be aggressive. We got to be physical because we know that's what they're going to do, and we have to match that, and we have to better that. Gegovic says that they are ready and prepared to dominate the field against Gross Point North, and that defensively they're going to stop the running game. Well, defensively, uh, we uh, we put down Jordan Hester. We put him down uh, on the line, you know, to protect the outside because, you know, they usually do a lot of sweeps. But, you know, we kind of just prepared this week. Uh, we just. You know, we made sure we uh, contain the outside and, you know, really prepare for that because they really run a lot. So, I mean, the passing game's not really there that much, but, you know, they still they still got some athletic players on the, you know, offense. Senior quarterback Zach Keen and senior Christian Gegovic both have a great relationship. And Gegovic has faith in his quarterback that he will make the adjustments that he needs to make coming up against Gross Point North. He's always been focused, always, like, he knows what he, he, know, he, knows what he has to do you know, when he goes into a game. So it's like, you know, he really prepared this week as in like, you know, maybe uh, he, he has to maybe make a lot better reads than, you know, he did last week. I'm not saying he did anything bad, but, you know, he's making a lot better reads. You know, we're really practicing on really opening up and, you know, reading reads, you know what I mean? Just really focusing on that this week. The Chieftains look forward to the very first home game of the season and look forward to winning their very first game at home. Yeah, you know, I think it's – the biggest focus is on us and what we do. Uh, I think last week uh, we did some things good, but we we also made some mistakes that hurt us, and we, we got to fix those. And that was kind of the message this week: is that uh, you know we learn from what we did last week, we get better every day, and uh, you know that's something I talk about with the players all the time, and they talk about it too. Is that if we focus on what we have to do, uh, focus on the things that we can control, and just go out and play our best football, then uh, you know we think that sets us up to be successful. And sometimes it goes away, sometimes it doesn't, but. Um, you know, we haven't played them in a while, and it's, it's exciting. It's an exciting challenge to, to have a new team that's come up into the division. I think our division's really strong this year, so, uh, you know, just trying to get better every day. We'll see if the practice paid off against Gross Point North in Utica's first home game. 
Till next episode, I'm Robert Gambrell. Thank you for watching The Chieftain Rewind.